Hi guys, I'm Callum from the Bushcraft Cave. Welcome to another video. Today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be making fire using a traditional fire still. This is a traditional fire still that's been hand forged by a blacksmith called Andy. Um, his work is, is excellent. I'd highly recommend these if you're into your primitive fire lighting. Um, this is made from high carbon still, so it's about 98% iron and 2% carbon. Um, I haven't got any char cloth with me today, although I've got the raw materials to make it. So I've got some organic materials, I've got some 100% cotton. Uh, so we're going to go start a fire. I've got an old um, air rifle pellet tin with a hole in the top, which is what we're going to make the char cloth in. And I'll catch up in a bit once we've got the fire going. Okay, cool. So it's a roasting hot day today. We're right into July now, so we're right into the heart of summer. And although the weather's been pretty bad the last few weeks, um, this last five days it's been it's been excellent um, we're gonna start a fire first of all and what I'm gonna use to start the fire with is on my way in here today I collected a load of dry glass dry grass even and this is gonna be my tinder bundle and then a lot of you will recognize what that is it's uh, Daldinia concentrica King Alfred's cakes coal fungus whatever you want to call it um, this stuff grows on uh, predominantly rossing wood you usually find it on um, I found these ones on ash trees which is where I usually find them but they can be on birch trees and a number of other trees as well we're going to get a spark on this with a uh, ferrous Syrian rod this is a light my fire 2.0 this is my favorite one out of um, the whole range that light my fire do if you're going to get one this is the one I'd recommend so we're going to get this going first of all once the fire is going uh, we'll get our charm material out we'll prep everything and we'll talk about some of the detail and what's going to be involved in actually the process of, of making the char. Okay guys, so now we've got our fire going with relative ease, we're just going to talk a little bit more about the theory behind, behind how char cloth is actually made. Now, char cloth is made via a process called pyrolysis, or pyrolysis, however you decide to say it. Now, the definition of pyrolysis is a thermochemical decomposition of an organic material in the absence of oxygen. And in simpler terms, if we were to get an organic material, such as cotton wool, linen or silk and we put it into a fire, what would happen is the various gases that it contains, most natural things are made from hydrogen, carbon and oxygen, but the other gases as well would all be expelled in the form of smoke and moisture um, and the material would simply combust. If we were to repeat that process though, but put the material in um, a container such as this one, which is an old um, pellet tin of 0.22s, uh, important thing is this this container won't combust um, much of the same process would happen however the material would not combust and although the hydrogen and the oxygen are released what you'll be left with is a very soft delicate black material which has an extremely high carbon content that can then be used in conjunction with your fire still uh, and a piece of flint and then it can be applied into a bird's nest and that is a, um, a very reliable way of keeping your uh, being able to make fire wherever you are in, in whatever conditions as long as you're able to get a bird's nest together um, through this is I've just used dry grass today but sweet chestnut dry grass 
tinder dry bracken whatever you can find out and about if you keep it in your pocket for the whole day it should dry out and be good to go by the end of the night um, so what we've used in here this is um, this is an old shirt this is a hundred percent cotton um, it needs to, whatever material you, you use it can't have any it can't be a mix it needs to be a hundred percent natural for example if this had if this was cotton and it was also um, polyester what would happen is uh, it would just melt through the plastic so it needs to be a hundred percent cotton and it will look it will usually just tell you that on the label so just fold this up a few times pop it in your tin screw the lid on and now we're ready to just pop this in the fire we've got behind us Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go now. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to pop our, our air rifle box inside the fire in all the coals. Okay, so our tin's been in there about two or three minutes now. You can see the flame from the top. Um, what that is, is when the oxygen comes out, it mixes with the wood gas from the rest of the fire and that's what causes it to flame. The flame, as the material uh, releases more of its oxygen, that flame will die down and it will become very small. To be honest with you, I think that's just about ready yet. I'll probably give it another minute before we take it out and then we'll let it cool down for a moment. Okay, so we're going to remove the tin now. And with that hole in the top, we're just going to plug it. So no more oxygen can get in there. Just like so. And then we're probably going to allow it to cool just, just for a few minutes. Because at the moment, obviously, it's going to be very, very hot in there. So just give it a few minutes to cool down. It's also very important that you do plug that hole so to stop any smouldering that could be going on with inside the container. Okay, so here's our finished result. So I left, I let this cool down for a few minutes out of the fire. This is the first time I've used this tin. So if you if you had any material on the top, that's that's obviously going to burn and come off. But the tin itself should be um, should be okay. I've seen some quite cool designs of tins actually. I've seen people use literally a um, <clears throat> like a tuna can with a piece of foil over the top. So you can be really creative with it. You just need to create that environment where there's just a one hole in it and, and oxygen can't get in and, and cause everything to, uh, to catch fire. So, when you take it out, this is what you should be left with. If fingers crossed everything's gone as it should. This really delicate black material peels off really easily, it's very fragile. Um, and this is what has a very, very high carbon content. So, what I've got with me is, I'm in the South Downs at the moment, and the environment here is, um, the ground is uh, full, of, full of calcium carbonate, full of chalk. So, wherever there's chalk, you'll never have any problem finding flint. So, <clears throat> This is again, once more, this is a traditional fire still. So this is 98% iron and 2% um, carbon, which makes it carbon steel. Um, steel is, a, is, a, is an iron alloy. Um, so we're well, gonna use that with a piece of flint. You wanna create, you wanna, if you can, people always say you wanna get a sharp edge. That is true because you wanna take off as much particles of the, um, of the fire still as possible. Um, Cause the more smaller particles you can take off, the more red sparks you're gonna get them as, it, as it oxidizes with the air. And again, just um, just a little bit of background on, on fire steels, because when I was younger, I used to think that it was the flint that was uh, creating the sparks, not the steel. Um, but it's the iron that's contained within the steel which creates it when, it when it oxidizes or effectively rusts with the air. It oxidizes very, very quickly. The, the, the heat can't dissipate um, quick enough, and, and that's why you get these, these red glowing embers. They're very small and very weak compared to something like a ferrocerium rod we were using earlier, um, which are white hot sparks, you know, 3000 degrees plus, these are, these are no way near that, these, these, are, these are only red hot. So that's why we need a piece of material like char cloth, um, which can take with a, with a very weak spark. So let's give this a go then. And I've got a little bit of our bird's nest material left here at the moment. Um, it's, a, it's a bit damp because it is very hot, so I think the inside of my leg, this side here anyway, is a bit damp just from the moisture escaping from me. Um, but this side, this side is okay, so we'll give it a go anyway. And what you really want to do is just rest a piece of the char cloth 
on top of the flint, just like that. You can see that quite clearly. You get the fire still in your hand and we're going to hit it against the corner, a sharp corner, and some of the red sparks are hopefully going to come up and ignite the char cloth. That's the idea anyway. All right, there we go. So as you can see, the char cloth burns very, very quickly. That's almost all gone already. So we're gonna try and get this in there. And there you are. It's as simple as that. And all you can do afterwards is just keep this. I, I usually keep it in a Ziploc bag just to keep any moisture out because after time, if any moisture gets on your char cloth, it, it will be ruined, it, it won't work. So to keep it in a Ziploc bag is always a really good idea and just keep a little bit on you. This takes up no weight at all. It's probably um, 50, 60 grams. It, it, is, it is really light, if that actually. And just to keep these in your pack, as a primitive fire lighting kit and then you know wherever you are and in, in whatever environment as long as you can create a bird's nest together to transfer the uh, the tinder into then you're always going to have a, a reliable source of fire on you so i hope you enjoyed the video um we're we're really honored to have andy make these for us if you like the look of them um you know come and check them out at the site the bushcraft cave the difference between these and 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 machine made ones are machine made ones are just that they're mass produced machine made fire stills um, they're all uniform the beauty of having each one of these individually forged is that each one of them is gonna none of them are the same every single one is unique in its own special way um, so thanks a lot Andy we, we we really love these and thank you for making them for us and um, and you know we'll, we'll certainly be back to get some more of you in the future but if you enjoyed the video um, Please feel very welcome to uh, to like, uh, to subscribe. Um, all our social media is located on the bottom. If you've got any questions or any comments or anything you've missed or anything you want to add, then please feel very welcome to add a comment and we'll catch you on the next video. So bye for now.